Hi everybody. Good day to you and welcome back. This is a 2008 Hummer H2 6.2 liter V8. Customer states has engine oil leak. Would like engine oil leak repaired and uh, engine oil change obviously. Um, I've got a uh, this thing of Lucas stop leak stuff right here. They say it works. Um, I don't know if we're gonna need this after I fix the leak because that is designed to make seals that are seeping leak less, not seals that are dripping not leak at all. Uh, let's move over to the other stall. I need to get onto my lift and uh, let's get this thing up in the air and uh, we'll start pulling her apart. And the reason that I know it's the engine oil pan leaking is because this truck has been here for about eight days and I've been diagnosing a very weird intermittent electrical issue that uh, we are not going to address at this exact current point in time. Oh look, there's a car in the parking lot and I am uh, interfering with uh, them crossing through the parking lot. Here you guys, you go ahead, you go ahead. There you go, there you go buddy. Go on through, yep this is definitely a road. All right, back down here below, we can see the uh, severity of said engine lubrication leak. Definitely looks like it's coming from the pan. I don't see much going on higher up. If we look in through, oh, I can't see. If we look up through, I don't see you. If we look over on the passenger side, we can see some heavy oil saturation around the back side of the pan and it uh, follows forward. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this pan down. A uh, little easier said than done because I've got to pull out this giant shield, this giant shield, this cross member. And uh, since it's a four wheel drive, the drive shaft, and the front differential all that stuff has to come out so this one's going to be a hard one so first things first let me pull off uh, all the bolts for this giant aluminum shield Backing up some, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, graded looking extra guard bit of business off of here next and I can go over here on top of the heat shield for now. Yay. Okay, next up we're gonna unbolt this cross member from the differential and get it unbolted from the frame and then go ahead and drop this thing down because that's in the way. Yeah, long oil on me. Gross. Alright, cross member. Come with me. just determined that the powers of self-lubrication are strong with this truck, so uh, I've decided to uh, use protection. Better safe than sorry. Come here. All right. Let's pull 
this drive shaft out next. We'll get it free. I can probably get away with just kind of dropping this uh, differential down some, but uh, I think I'd rather just pull it out so it's easier. And less dangerous too. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Thanks, phone. We missed you. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing out of here right now because when drive shafts fall out and hit you in the head, it hurts and uh, we don't want that to happen. More pry bar. Oh, come off. Lots more pry bar. What is this? Yeah, come here. Right. Okay, this is the right front CV axle. This is part of the differential assembly, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these bolts out. We're gonna separate the CV axle from the uh, from the differential. Almost got my finger, did you see that? Good thing I know how to move through the matrix. Guys separated too. All we're here. Just prime apart. A little bit of down action. Ding! Axle's done. And we'll go do the same over here on the driver's side. that there's one mount there and one mount on the other side going vertically. We'll set the jack up, I'll strap it on, then we'll unbolt it and then lower the unit down and get it out of the way. That's the plan, that's the procedure. And that's what we're gonna do. Right, let's see how this is gonna work here. Got another nut and bolt, I think, I think there's a nut on that. Maybe not, I don't feel it, loud noises. Yeah, it's on there somewhere. Nineteen, maybe. Thumbs. I got the wrong size. Hang on. Come out. those together. Okay, last bolt is right here and it goes vertical. I have uh, already unplugged the vacuum line that actuates the locker. It's a non-electronic unit. Last bolt. Oh no, there's a nut. I'm gonna have to find that. Yeah, I think I figured it out. I got that figured it out. I'm up there with a little stubby wrench holding the nut because I can't get a, uh, a boxed end wrench or a socket on it. Very sketchy. I don't like sketchy. Uh, come here, nut, because I don't want to lose that. There it is.
Here comes the bolt. All right, so this unit should be uh, floating free right now. Okay, I'm gonna start uh, letting this thing down a little bit so I can reach over and uh, maybe get a strap onto it. Washer gravity. Okay, this, uh, this thing needs a little bit of wood just to stabilize things. At least a piece over there on, on that side. That's where the strap is gonna go. Okay, let's go up and over, and then we'll draw it down onto the block of wood. And what I'll do is I'll run this over like there, and then I'll attach this side right here. That way it's got more than one point of contact. You know, for safety. That looks safe. Things flip flopping all over. I guess that's good. Better than nothing. Doo do, fry bar, doo do. Come down. It appears to be uh, a little bit stuck. Ah. All right, coming down, coming down a little bit. Slowly. Nice, it's gonna clear everything. And the differential is free. Let's roll this thing out of here and then uh, we can pull the pan down. All righty, looking good so far. Let's uh, get this oil drain in position here and we're gonna drain this drain. Uh, I'll pull the filter off later. I don't wanna do it right now because it'll just drain oil all over me and, and I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna drain this guy out. We're gonna pop the perimeter pan bolts off and remove the unit. Then we can head over to the parts washer, clean it up put it back after it gets a new casket and then our resale is complete. Okie dokes, oil is getting a little scarce here. It's almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling these bolts out. We've got uh, I think 15 or 16 around the perimeter, two in the back, two big ones in the back and then two up here for this oil cooler uh, manifold assembly Then the pan will come down. All right, let us get started. Start pulling these guys out with a wobbly 10. And we're gonna go ahead and speed this up into super close ready to come out. I've got uh, two more bolts back here, the big 15s, and then this unit will uh, will drop free. All right, let's break them loose first. Because they're usually pretty tight, that one wasn't. Yeah, it was that one. Someone's been in here before because this bolt has uh, witness marks on it and that one up there is mismatched. Lots have already been here action. I do believe I've got all these fasteners removed. Yes. Yes, I do. What are you hung up on? What is this? Oh, wires. Not good. Wiring harness is huge. It's large and in charge and in the way. Well, wiring harness is out of the way, but I still can't get her to come. Ah, there it goes. I got her to come. No worries. Oi, what is this? It's blue, so it used to be good. Looks like a Felpro gasket of some sort. Ah, there's lubricant running down my leg. I don't accept that either. Okay, let's get that thing out of the way. Take a look inside, we can notice uh, an absence of sludgy buildup. And there's a little bit down there, but we've seen worse. We've seen much worse. 
that's looking good. That'll be an easy cleanup. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this dipstick tube out of here because I have to re-o-ring that. That is a uh, critical step of this repair. Uh, a lot of people don't do it because it's two extra bolts and one nut, uh, but I do it because those O-rings are a very, very common failure point on LS engines. Plus, it'd be a real shame to do all this work and then drop the ball at the finish line. Gravity. It'd be a real shame indeed. Alright, pick them up, tube. Yeah, look at that one. See how flat it is right here on the side? This thing should be round and bowed, but it is not. It is flat and junk. Super shiny, clean time. All right, maximum shininess has been achieved. Let's fit the gasket. We'll put a couple bolts in it. So we can prep the block. Yeah. Okay, we're going to need some uh, liquid sealant on the corners of, uh, of this gasket here, and I'll show you why when we get back over to the uh, to the engine. Put a couple little dabs right here. Here. All right, let's head on over. All right, so I've cleaned this up a little bit, but if we take a look right here, we see the engine block on both sides that runs forward. Then we see this rear cover right here. And then over here on the front, we've got engine block, engine block, and front cover. Now there's a, there's a doo 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 hoo in there. There's a transition between the block and the, fr and the front and rear covers. And in that transition, there's this little bitty little gap right here. And the rubber on the gasket cannot necessarily fill that gap very efficiently. So we put a little bit of a dab of uh, sealant on there. That way when the pan is bolted on and the, and the gasket is compressed, it can press that sealant into those little voids right there and create a seal. And uh, that is the purpose for the sealant. We don't need it all the way around and caked on. We just need a little bit right here to fill that little void. And if you have not noticed while we're here, I've already gone ahead and installed the dipstick tube with the new O-ring. And for some reason, every time I do this, you guys tell me that I missed some of the bolts. So there's one, two, and three. I have all the bolts on. Okay, let's get some of the sealant where it needs to be. Well, that wasn't, that didn't work, did it? Stay, get, get up there and stay there. What is this? Fine, I'll touch it. There. Another little dab right there. Yeah, number three, right, right there. Last one, light's crappy. Last one, sealant applied, there we go. And now you can see, that's better. All right, let's get the pan and get that thing back up into position. All right, moment of truth, here it comes. Gaskets up there. bolt started. Two bolts started. Oh yeah. Sling back around here to this side. There's another bolt up there I need to get started. I don't know. Come back you guys. Why you gotta scare me like that? You know I'm jumpy. Alright, one more. There we go. That's three bolts in. The part's located. Now I'm gonna run through 
put all the rest of the bolts in and, uh, and get them uh, torqued down. Again, we're gonna do that in super high speed motion. Okay, skipping ahead some, bolts are in, wiring harness is attached, little plastic uh, covers are covering, drain plug, and I've got two more of these bigger bolts here I need to run down. Then uh, I can go put the axle back in. Get in there. Flickages. But before I do that, I gotta check final torque on all the fasteners. And our axle will be ready, so stand by. Re-kick. And again, for everybody who says I missed a bolt, there's nothing left. And that only seems to happen on GM oil pans for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I skip around too much. No matter. Regardless of the circumstances, I did a good job. All right, differential, time for you to go up to your home. Again, we got one uh, fastener there, one there, and then there's the cross member with the one big one that goes right here in the back by the pinion. So, differential moving on up. And using that uh, mount on the right kind of as my guide. I hung up on something. What are we doing? There we go. On the hung up. Uh-oh, my wood fell out. That's not a good sign. Go up. This is a rubber mallet, by the way. It's a dead blow, not a uh, steel hammer. Got it. Now it's in. Partial victory. And I got my nut. I'm just going to get it threaded on the other side. Just a little bit, okay. All right, we need a little bit more up. We get it located, that was too much up. There. Okay, this ought to be interesting. Let's see if I can do this before the uh, battery dies here. Still gotta locate this bolt and get it aligned. It, oh, that was easy. Okay, bolt is aligned. See, a little bit more up. And I've got to reach around on the top side and put the nut into place. Do to do. Which is a kind of a task on its own. Yeah. It's all done with fingertips. There we go. All right, it's threaded. Good. Going back up with my uh, stubby wrench to hold on to the nut, and I can tighten this down. Yeah. Trying to get a on it. Here we go. Nick. 
and uh, I'll hit that other side over there too. Okay, and that should secure both sides. Then we can get the jack out of here. Clickage. Going down. Let's get this out of here. We're done with you, Jack. Goodbye. Well, while we're here, we can bolt these uh, CV axles on. Okay, shaft number one. Shove that in. Right in there. What things? Oh. <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a nasty microwave. Oh, vacuum hose. I gotta do that vacuum hose before I forget. I already forgot. Here, get out of there. Come on, hose. What is this? Okay, got it. Six bolts again, and as always, I'm not tightening them. He drove all the way back up here. I don't know where did he go. Uh, some meeting. It was far away. Does he live up in this area? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. I wouldn't have come back. Just saying. Yeah, well. I'm out for the day. I'm out for the day. Okay, moving on, we got passenger side axle. Shove that guy in. You, you gotta compress these a little bit to get them to fit. And then once they go in, that little lip slips into a divot on the flange here, and then they uh, they mate very well. Like so. That's why I left the wheels on too, because then I can rotate this. Or why, I, I'll rephrase, that's why I'm glad I left the wheels on so I can rotate this to line up these bolt holes. Don't make a liar out of me. Line up bolts, line up. A little bit more of that way. That was the wrong that way. I need to go the other that way. Let's try that one. The other side was easier. Maybe I just had better luck. That's what it is, it was luck. Luck of the draw, extra fortune. It's my lucky day. No, oh, I went the wrong way. That was dumb. Why? Rookie. Rookie move. slippage and I don't know if I got this one or not yes all right TV axles are in okay we moved back around back to the pinion and I'm gonna go ahead and get this drive shaft put back in we'll get those straps on and then I can put the uh, lower cross member in and uh, finish bolting the differential in once that's done we'll go back to the old pan put a filter on it Then we can refill it, redo the skid plates, and uh, check for leaks. We need to get this uh, seated all the way. There.
11 millimeter bolts for the strap, not uh, not tens. They're deceiving. turn the shaft I've also got to rotate the mass of the wheels so it's a little bit difficult all right it's cross member time let's get this big heavy thing back in remember it hinges cool little feature but the problem is, is it's got to have this little plate in there so I'm gonna put the big bolt in we'll put the plate in and then See what I can do about. Oh, that's not gonna work. Okay, well, I'll just put the bolts in the other side to hold it there. We can worry about this later. I don't see why they didn't want to go in. It has to. Oh, there we go. That was easy. If I get the proper order of operations, this is no problem at all. Silly. See, that's my problem. I can never figure out what order of operations I would like to uh, conduct. There, good. One more on the other side over here. Get in there. Got it. Okay, let me throw the nuts on the end of these four bolts right here, and then we can go ahead and uh, fetch the filter and uh, let this guy down. Noises, loud ones. member bolts and then we'll get these uh, skid panels and whatnot installed. I have not put the oil filter on yet. It's upstairs uh, on the passenger seat. All right, oil filter time. It's lubricated on the gasket. Let's get this guy in here. Mobile one filter. Tight squeeze in there too. This uh, differential in the way. Filter click. All right, let's back up and put our uh, undercarriage protective paneling back on. All right, let's see if I can manage this. Kind of awkward. A little bit heavy. Yeah, one bolt. Get in there, please. Back my socket. Mm -hmm. oh, one more click. 
Uh, real quick, let's get all this old oil residue out of here. Make it nice and shiny. Then we'll go refill the pan and then stocking the engine. Nice and shiny. Ah. All right, let's get this thing lowered down. Off the locks. Come down. Okay. Let us re-poppening the hood. It's a three-step process. That's not it. That's parking brake. Valvoline fully synthesized high mileage max life five winter 30 weight engine oil. Not sponsored, that's just what we're using. My funnel is taking too long. And it's really gonna take a while because I'm using some of this Lucas too. And this stuff's like cement. I mean, it's not cement, it's just, it's very, very thick. Look at that. Here, let's thin it out so it drains. <laughs> Alright guys, let's go ahead and get this thing started and leak check it and uh, get this thing parked and finished up. Restocking the engine. guys we're running out of time running out of memory running out of patience and running out of room in the shop for this truck so i'm gonna go ahead and close this video out with 18 seconds left of memory by thanking all of you for watching this video certainly hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video you know the drill let me know about that by tapping that like button down below and most importantly do not forget to have yourselves a great day three seconds left see you guys later end of transmission Seriously, I'm not kidding. Check it out. SD card full, three seconds left. That's all that I got. But I'm not going to deprive you of the finalized leak checking procedure. So let's take a peek down here and make sure we're all looking good. I see no drippage action. I'm going to let it run for a little while and we'll check the back of the pan. But uh, I do believe this is a highly successful operation. Yeah, it looks good there.